Hey there. Last time, I talked about the way that Donald Trump is building a worldwide coalition in opposition to U.S. interests. The Iran deal controversy is only the most obvious place where this is happening. Trump's efforts to tear down the world trade infrastructure are also building this coalition. Today, I'd like to talk about why that matters. And to do it, I want to talk about the end of the British Empire. I'm writing a book at the moment called Avoiding the British Empire, and it's about how the United States can avoid falling into the same traps the British Empire did. Historians favor many different dates for the end of the British Empire. But for me, the one that makes the most sense is 1956, with an event that we know as the Suez Crisis in the West. In 1956, Britain, France, and Israel invaded Egypt. It was a classic piece of imperial skullduggery. Supposedly, in the name of peace, Britain took back the Suez Canal that Egypt had just nationalized. It looked like a success. Then the United States intervened. This intervention in the Suez Crisis didn't involve a single U.S. soldier. U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower decided that he had no interest in backing this 19th century play from fading European powers. He simply told the British that if they continued their occupation, he would no longer support the British pound, sending their country into bankruptcy. The British had to back down, even though they had complete military dominance of the situation. This destroyed British prestige forever. Though only 16 British soldiers died, it was the end of the empire. After 1956, if the British wanted to look like a big deal on the world stage, they could only do it by allying with the United States. Independent British power in the world ended with the Suez Crisis. One of the goals of this channel is to fend off a similar Suez crisis moment for the United States. Many people think that China is likely to occupy the role of the United States when the U.S. empire goes the way that the British empire did. I actually don't think that's very likely. If absolutely everything goes right for China over the next 50 years, then maybe they could occupy a position of power similar to the position of power that the United States had in 1945. But that is almost certainly not going to happen. No, when the U.S. empire is told to take its ball and go home, it will be a worldwide coalition that does it. This moment should have been decades off. The United States has actually done a pretty good job of providing benefits to a wide range of people and playing natural enemies off of each other. Most of the components of any broad U.S. alliance have more reason to be suspicious of each other than they do of the United States. Sane leadership from the U.S. presidency should have meant decades before we had to worry about a Suez moment. But this Iran deal issue risks creating a real international anti-U.S. coalition today, not decades from now. Honestly, it probably won't. The United States is still absurdly powerful. We might even be able to force Europe to adopt new Iran sanctions, even though they really, really don't want to. And that's perhaps the most frustrating thing about all of this. We could easily make it through a Trump term or even two Trump terms without suffering the consequences of this horrifically bad decision Donald Trump has made. It will be Donald Trump's successors that have to deal with Iran as North Korea. And it will be Donald Trump's successors that have to deal with a much richer world that hates us. Make no mistake, Donald Trump's presidency is a turning point in U.S. history. It is not a turn for the better. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you'd like to help me make more videos like this one, I suggest you look into my crowdfunding thing on Patreon. Uh, you can find out more at a link here. Thanks.